Okay, everybody, welcome back to AWP 2019, this amazing conference of writers and representatives of writers' programs from universities all across the country. I'm Rich Folley, and you're watching PBS Books. And what a moment, this is so cool for me. Two Portland people in one, one couch. We have Lydia Yuknavich on my immediate left, and we have Cheryl Stray, two incredible authors. Welcome to have you both. Here. Yes, Pleasure. You, yeah. you both said that this is a different kind of conference for you because it's in your hometown, you're getting texts from your kids asking what's for dinner, <laughs> you can't release completely. What's it like being in a hometown with 11, 12,000 other writers, many of them friends, who all want to say hi while you're here? We thought it was going to be easier and a really good idea, and we both invited house guests like <laughs> idiots. <Yeah. laughs> and house yeah. guests are also asking us what's for dinner. Yes. So it's, it is, it's fun, and it's exciting to share our beautiful city uh, with so many of our friends. I mean, we both have, honestly, hundreds of friends among the crowds here, and another hun you know, couple hundred more acquaintances and people we've crossed paths with, and so it's kind of cool to have them come to our hometown. Yeah, representing Rose City. We're, we're, we're waiting, we'll, we'll be, I think, joyous throughout the weekend and happy when Monday comes. We can go back to our little hidey holes and write. Yes. <laughs> we're not going to let that happen too fast though, because there's lots more to do. But, <laughs> but you guys have known each other for a while. Portland mm -hmm. is this unique community in American cities. It's different than other cities. What is it about this city, first of all, that attracted you both to this part of the country? We'll start oh. with you, Cheryl, and then we'll come to, we'll come to you. Well, you know, it's a combination of, of the way that, that my life took me in, in this direction. I finished my hike on the Pacific Crest Trail that I wrote about in Wild, about an hour east of here. And so Portland was the natural place. Essentially, I ran out of money on yeah, my hike. And, I had to to Portland. Yeah. and then I fell in love with the city and the landscape and the region. The Pacific Northwest is really all of the things I love the most when it comes to the natural world. And then it's fabulous that the, the cultural world is also much aligned with my interests. A lot of creatives, a lot of writers, a lot of filmmakers and artists. And so I just decided to stay. How about you, Lydia? Rain. Rain? Because water. Yes. So rain. There you go. And, and come on, coffee too. Coffee is good. And wine. Wine is excellent. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, so I already had it inside me. And I left and lived a bunch of different places. But when the return, when the call to come home came, I wanted to raise my son here because how much I loved it growing up here. And Portland isn't perfect, but it's beautiful, it's small, it has amazing creative community, and the other stuff we're just going to keep working on. Yeah. Well, the idea of the Misfits Manifesto, something that you've written about and talked about, seems like it fits you both in a way. And I mean that in the most beautiful way of misfit, right? It's unusual. It's people who've lived, experienced, maybe felt pain, but and they're able to write about it and talk about it. And that's something when I think about you both, um, being able to sort of pass, have these passages that are so deep and meaningful, and yet being able to translate them to the universal is like something you both do so well. Thank and I'll you. start with uh, Lydia, with, with you. When I read um, your memoir, The Chronology of Water, and The Misfits Manifesto, um, both of which just tell this, uh, you know, start with the chronology of water, like such a challenging upbringing. And yet sit, sitting in front of me is this funny human person who's like sharing guidance for me in the Misfits Manifesto. I mean, that is not easy. You've come out this other side and now wizened are able to share some of that. That's become sort of what you do so well. I don't know about the wiser part, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the ability to find forms of self-expression sort of interrupts the drive towards self-destruction. And so if I can step into that motion and find expression and show other people, expression will save your life. Paint it, write it, sing it, make something out of clay or just be with other people. We can save each other's lives. But I don't feel like I transcend any difficulties or struggles. I just got a whole batch of new difficulties <laughs> and struggles every year of my life. Yeah. But this art making for me is key because it gives you the way through to keep moving, which is why Wild is such an important book to me because it's like paradigmatic of the ability to stay in motion and to move through suffering or difficulty. It's like the perfect book to keep us all alive. Yeah, high praise. Aw, thank you. <laughs> well, you know, Lydia helped me write Wild and <laughs> um, in that we were in our writer's group together while she was writing Chronology of Water. That's so amazing. 
I was writing Wild, and you know, other things as well, both of us writing other things during that time as well. But it, it's really powerful to me that in this place that I've made home, I have found deep roots with really amazing writers and friends. And Lydia is, you know, high, you know, first on that list, really, honestly, in terms of that sort of kindred sense of um, connection I feel with her work and with her life, with her as a human. And I think it's that very thing you put your finger on, um, is that, you know, we both, here we are, and we both took a jagged path to get here, and we're both still walking a jagged path. Yeah. You know, I mean, neither one of us. Uh, I'll say I think that that we've both gained some wisdom. I'll own that. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're gonna gain. We, uh, we'll I them. lost mine. But it's, it's at my house. It's also true that like there's always more to learn, and I love I love that spirit about Lydia, that humility that's everywhere in her work. Uh, we have the power to change our lives, to heal, and there's always more to do. Yeah, I wrote down on my notes. Believe in the, it's owning your life and believe in the value and integrity of the jagged path. The value and integrity of the jagged yeah. path. Most people don't want necessarily the jagged path. It's not something you wish for and no. yet you understand that that, that that walk is what turns you into something so much deeper, so much more aware, self-aware, but also aware of other people's struggles as well. Mm, exactly. Absolutely. I had to swim, but same deal. Yeah. You had exactly. to swim your way there. <laughs> exactly. But you know, we both teach writing, and uh, what we both know is just that thing. If we, if we locked everyone in this convention center in, in the room and said, tell us the story about something that, you know, a, a story that formed you, a story that made you, a story that taught you more than anything else, almost always that would be a story that, that you wouldn't have chosen. You wouldn't have chosen to have your heart broken or your parents uh, be not the way parents are supposed to be to you or to have this thing fall apart or that thing not work out. And yet we learn from those things. We never forget the lessons we learned the hard way. Yeah. You're both, I would also both classify you as ferocious feminists. I mean, you've become sort of icons in that way, in the way that you speak and so strongly. And I think you help other people sort of guide their way through what's really challenging world in that regard right now, mm -hmm. with changing mores and changing definitions of what's appropriate and what's not. Um, but you're both fierce in that regard, <laughs> and I think there's a kinship there. Um, you yep. know, when, I was, when I was talking to my wife about some of the questions, I think she got emotional talking about it, because she really wanted to talk about how the fact that, you know, you're, what, what women are looking for, which I couldn't probably put my finger on as well as she can, is someone to just acknowledge what they're going through and the challenges every day. And that's today. But someday maybe there'll be actual equality, but in the meantime to acknowledge the inequality and the challenges of that every day. How do you help other people sort of navigate that personally, both in your writing and your teaching? Uh, Lydia, I can start with you, because I read your, twi your Twitter feed and I'm, I'm I always encouraged. I get all encouraged. feisty in the morning. You are feisty, but I think that's I what we feisty. look for. Then yeah. I take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think my, my strategy continues to be, if anything good or, or useful comes in front of me, I jam my foot in the door and hold it open with my shoulders to try and get as many misfits through as possible yes. <laughs> before the world shuts it down again. Mm -hmm. And that kind of has worked for me because I gravitate toward people who you know, are a little off or have difficulty. And so this jamming your foot in the door has turned out to be everything to try and get people through any path that you can find when all the other paths seem to shut down for them. So what do you think that this new era, this, this, the, the, we came from the Obama era into the Trump era, what do you think that's done for misfits in general? Do you think that's made them come out and be louder and prouder and more, and more vocal or do you, do you think that it has a suppressing component? I think it's done what it's always done. Misfits have been around forever and people who, who have slightly different forms have been around forever, but the power structures that oppress or repress tend to make us louder or quieter depending on what's going on. So it's kind of both though because people on the edges in all kinds of categories right now are surging for voice and story and presence, but it's also a time where there are extra horrible efforts to silence those very people. So. It's an active time, it's an alive time, but it's going to take all of us to make any movement happen. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to me to see which, which side is, uh, has more 
power at the moment? Which one has like the ability to sort of rise above the din and to kind of break through? I so hear you, but I'm done with sites. Whoever's willing to get the shovel out and move the mud, I'll say. <laughs> um, I don't care who they are. If you're willing to move the mud, let's get in the ditch together and change this because the entire planet is at stake at this point. I agree. And Cheryl, you've, you've like been writing, I mean, for a long time you wrote as Dear Sugar, you've been giving it literal advice to people for a long time. Now you've become, as people, you told me walking through here, everybody wants to, to say hello because you have been in this space for so long. But you're also looked upon as somebody who has walked that path before and has a lot to teach, both you and Lydia. But what is the role now do you see that writers can have in moving that needle and digging that, as Lydia said? I've truly believe in the power of story. Uh, and, and I think we throw that phrase around a lot and we don't know what we're saying when we say that. What I mean is I, I think that story, our, our stories, stories we create, the stories we hear from others, the stories that artists make in the world and that people tell are the things that, that allow us to evolve, to be that bigger self. Uh, to be capable of being the kinds of citizens and leaders that we need. And so, you know, when, when Trump was elected, a lot of people in this room and in this community said, they despaired and said, I'm just a writer. I should do something that really makes a difference. And I, my response to that is absolutely not. There's, there's no better time than to dig in. Uh, there's no better time than now to dig in on your writing and tell those stories that matter the most to you. Because if they matter the most to you, they're going to matter to others as well. And you know, there, ha there isn't a day that goes by that Lydia and I don't meet somebody or hear from somebody online or on, via email um, that th those people don't reach out to us and say, you changed my life. Your book allowed me to do this. It opened up this thing in me. And I really think that that's what artists do on a grand scale. That's why art matters. It tells us who we are and where we've been and where we can go next. And so I, I feel really political about my work. I, I, I don't know that my work is what we call overtly political, but I think it's feminist every word, every breath of it. And I think it's, it seeks to transform the world. That's, you know, that's what I, that was always my mission as an artist. And so you know, I think that, that to deliver upon that um, has everything to do with actually believing in the power that we hold as artists and writers. And you feel that so strongly in this room at AWP with the people whose voices, you know, this sort of delightfully odd crowd of passionate artists who are writing their truth and trying to find audiences and all, but they're there, there's so many different voices. And I think that they're yeah. all trying to do exactly what you've done for so long here. It's like a really powerful place to be, actually. Thank you. Here in your hometown. I'm, and you know, I want to say too about, it's interesting, like, an odd crowd, like I think the Accountants Association of America conference would be so much odder, right? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> You're Give me right. a writer any day. Yeah. I mean, like you know, uh, that would be an odd conference. <laughs> I wouldn't be invited. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a tough conference to be at. But it would be. I'm sure that there's such love for the same accountants who are. Well, we love the accountants. Yeah, Somebody's right. got to do. That's right. We write the books. It they is do tax the books. season, mind you, right now. So. <laughs> Well, there's so many wonderful books in your world. Wild, The Chronology of Water, The Misfits Manifesto. I'm holding so many of them. The Book of Joan, which we've talked about before, Brave Enough. It's so cool to have you guys here. Thank you. And to have you together means even more. I love the work that you do. So do so many. And <laughs> I appreciate you. you stopping by PBS Books. Our Thanks. pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, Rich. So nice to talk to you. Oh, it was wonderful. All right, everybody. We're not done. There's a heck of a lot more coming up, but what an honor. Stick around. I'm Rich Folly. You're watching PBS Books. <laughs>